The Deep Dive Podcast presents Mysteries of the Deep. Hello, divers. I'm Tom Feeney, amateur sleuth and professional police lineup model. This is a side project of the Deep Dive Podcast where myself and my co host, Manda, take a look at what's available on streaming media. On this episode, we'll dive into a minor Hollywood mystery. There's no crime, no sordid details, no good guys or bad guys. Just a question. Who was actually responsible for one of the scariest movies of the 1980s? Mysteries of the Deep presents Who Really Directed Poltergeist? looks just like the one next to it and the one next to that and the one next to that a young couple live in it give Ken a kiss <laughs> you are so with their three children <laughs> and something more Poltergeist. It knows what scares you. Ah, yes, the classic horror film Poltergeist, a twisted version of 80s suburbia, where the American dream is turned into a disturbing nightmare as a result of unchecked human expansion. Poltergeist explored the dark underbelly of the suburban ideal and the notion of the nuclear family, a nondescript, cookie-cutter vision of life. Husband, wife, kids, dog, two-car garage, swimming pool, a facade of normality built on an unstable, and in this case, undead, foundation. The film, released in 1982, was both a critical and box office success, if you ask most people who directed Poltergeist, they may say Steven Spielberg. After all, he was the writer and the producer, and the film matches his style and cinematic sensibilities. However, the film is credited to director Toby Hooper, best known for the much rougher and grungier The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It seems like a long way from central Texas to the California suburbs, and Poltergeist doesn't feel like any other film Hooper has directed before or since. This has led to much speculation about who actually directed the film, Toby Hooper or Steven Spielberg. The answer is not as easy as it may seem. As Poltergeist was preparing to enter production, Spielberg was working on post-production of another more personal project. A child's joy, a mother's love, a friend's devotion. In this season of peace, share the magic with your family. Steven Spielberg's E.T. The Extraterrestrial from Universal Pictures, rated PG. Now playing at theaters near you, check newspapers. According to Spielberg's contract with Universal Studios, he was not permitted to direct another movie while still working on E.T. That, plus a coming director's strike, meant that taking the helm of Poltergeist was not an option. However, according to reports from both cast and crew, the credit for directing the film should go to, well, both Hooper and Spielberg? Well, taking all the published accounts into account. The two had an unusual working arrangement. Spielberg spent most of the shooting schedule on the set, advising Hooper throughout the shoot. Ultimately, Hooper was the one saying action and cut, but since this was Hooper's first major studio film, he pretty much had to defer to Spielberg's wishes. 
And to paraphrase Boromir, one does not simply override the director of Jaws. Hooper also had to defer to Spielberg's experience in dealing with complex special effects and professional actors. In essence, Spielberg was calling the shots, and Hooper was there to get a masterclass in studio filmmaking. By all accounts, Hooper was happy to do so. It was the opportunity of a lifetime, and if Spielberg was willing to let Hooper take the credit, so be it. Now, perhaps the final word about this debate comes from director John Leonetti, who helmed the original Annabelle movie. Leonetti was an assistant cameraman on Poltergeist and was on the set every day of shooting. In a 2017 interview, Leonetti seemed to put the debate to rest. He said, quote, Steven Spielberg directed that movie. There's no question. Leonetti went on to say, it wasn't anything against Toby, Every once in a while, he would actually leave the set and let Toby do a few things just because, but really, Stephen directed it. Now, there are other accounts that describe a more collaborative relationship between the two directors, but given their vastly different rungs on the Hollywood ladder, it seems likely that the more experienced and powerful part of the duo was the real driving force behind Poltergeist. Thanks for listening. If this is the first time you've heard this podcast, check out our past episodes and subscribe so you don't miss a single one. And we would love to hear from you. Drop us a line at the deep dive podcast at gmail.com or on our Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter feeds. You can find links to those on our website, the deep dive All clips used in the deep dive microcast are meant for educational purposes only and not to infringe on existing copyrights. The Deep Dive Microcast is a production of Automaton Studios. <laughs>